Um, I'll just start my presentation. My name is Chris Dyke. Um, I'm a former graduate student from here at the IDL. And this week's BSOG is on my thesis, uh, which I just graduated about a few months ago. Uh, the thesis is on a comparison of manual blind control uh, using two different methods of co -simu or simulation uh, as far as daylight harvesting goes. I'll give you a little bit of background. Uh, born and raised in Boise, went to U of I, graduated from my, with my undergrad in 2010, and spent uh, a year in industry working for a, um, a or Nose Controls, was a wholesale HVAC distributor here in Boise, and, um, and I currently work for a controls contractor here in town as a sales engineer. So um, that's a little background about me, but uh, we'll, get, we'll get right into this. So a little bit of background as far as my presentation goes. Energy modeling is what its background is. and uh, give you a little bit of background. Energy modeling is just basically a simulation tool used to predict energy consumption of a building. Why is it important? There's uh, several reasons, as I'm sure you guys all probably know, but um, a few of them are, uh, it, what it comes down to is it provides an invaluable advantage to um, an installation of a, um, a specific uh, measure that's going to save energy and it allows you to simulate the response of the building throughout the entire year to kind of give you an idea of how much energy you're going to save and decide whether or not it's feasible uh, as far as a, um, a capital investment. Um, then we'll go into a little bit about manual blind control. What is manual blind control? It's an operational response to a physiological and a psychological um, trigger within a building. Uh, the reasons behind occupant interaction with blinds comes down to several things, uh, whether it's view preference, uh, glare is a big thing, privacy, time of day, time of year. Um, there are numerous, um, numerous reasons for people controlling the blinds, and uh, the main thing I want to get out of this is that there's no consistent guideline right now that is used to, um, to simulate blind control. So right now, actually, blind control isn't typically modeled at all. Typically, model is always always retracted, so um, you have sunlight coming in 24/7. But through these these different um, factors, and really, why is why is blind control important? Um, what it comes down to is it's been well documented that blinds affect energy use. Um, however, the blind controls and manual blind control algorithms are typically not introduced because of the complexity. Um, it's been shown that buildings that, um, that use daylighting, um, daylight harvesting within their program um, compared to buildings that use just strictly electric lighting have been, sent, have been known to show up to 60% energy savings. So they are, they are an important factor to take into account when you're modeling an existing building. So I have three, three main goals for, um, for this presentation. The first one is to identify, model, and compare typical manual blind control algorithms. Um, so what I did is I took <clears throat> five different control schemes and modeled them and compared them uh, to show uh, basically the relative difference between them. The results were then compared using Energy Plus simplified daylighting method and um, compared them to Radiance, which is an advanced um, control algorithm. Uh, used to feed into Energy Plus to get annual energy savings. And a third goal is to develop a framework using Building Control's virtual test bed, which is I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, which is designed to uh, incorporate Energy Plus with Radiance on a uh, simultaneous basis. So you click one button, you hit Simulate, um, Energy Plus will call out Radiance and do an hour-by-hour -hour, um, simulation using a more um, accurate means of daylight. So the first goal we'll stick with is identifying, modeling, uh, modeling, comparing the manual blind control algorithms. So the, the five algorithms that I've um, chosen to model in this presentation are always engaged, which is just um, a, a typical building. You know, you'll just put the blinds down for some reason, whether it's glare or view, you know, view preference, whatever, and man or and. Uh, Occupants will typically just leave it engaged for the entire year and never change it just because it's it's easy and you kind of forget. Are you modeling a specific type of blind? 
Um, yeah, it's just a, um, it's the horizontal slap line, just basically that line right there is what I took. I took the two inch um, gap and the two inch um, slat and just modeled that. I didn't get into any kind of like Venetian blind or anything like that, but just stuck with one blind. And then on the other, the other flip side is always retracted, so um, the typical modeling is just to not model blinds and allow daylight and solar heat gains to just come in 24-7. So these are the two extremes that I'm going to model. Uh, the third one's daylight glare index uh, at a view preference angle of 20 degrees. Uh, this Corey De Silva uh, put out a paper uh, last year on this basically glare index. Uh, what it is is it's taken at um, not a direct view angle to the window, but if you're looking typically, you know, an office setup kind of like this is you're uh, 90 degrees from the window, but this view angle is taking it um, 20 degrees in, so a slight view angle towards the window, um, but the trigger is 20 DGI at a view angle of 20. The next one is a, uh, an algorithm that was developed by Kevin Van and Wyman Ellenberg here at the lab, um, and I'm going to call it Blind Switch 2012A. Uh-oh. Hide this. 2012A is based on um, exterior uh, exterior illumination on the surface with increasing penetration depth from the sun, and also brings into account um, the, the amount of time the sunlight has been on the surface inside. So that's the first uh, blind switch algorithm. And now this is working. Kevin, an advisor. Kevin was an advisor on this project, yeah. So the main project was developed by Kevin and then kind of introduced um, some co-simulation, that sort of thing. So it's, it's really an integration between architectural and engineering practices. It's really the goal. 2012B is based on exterior illumination on the uh, facade, uh, depending upon um, the floor height. So that, that's the main trigger in the second one. So one, one concept I'm going to bring up a lot is uh, percent occlusion. Percent occlusion is based on the amount of windows covered by the blinds, depending on the blind height, so where at the blinds are at in the window, and the blind tilt angle. Um, here's just kind of a couple equations that you can kind of see, but basically it takes each individual window per facade, per floor, and it finds out the percent occlusion and then sums them and divide, you obviously divide by uh, the total number of windows on the facade and floor and you get a general uh, percent occlusion. So like here, uh, this would be a completely engaged, uh, slat, probably slat angle of uh, zero degrees, so zero degrees with the horizontal. So that would be uh, five over five times um, one over three. So that would be the view angle or the, the percent occlusion for that window. So then you sum it for each window, which would be different. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of the background of how that's calculated. So they're performed using Energy Plus, Radiance, and Building Control's virtual test bed. Um, are you guys familiar with um, Energy Plus somewhat? It's a, uh, it's a free software available uh, through the DOE that allows you to simulate um, annual consumption of a, of a building. Radiance is used to, is a more accurate means of daylight harvesting and uh, BCVTB is actually it's, it's developed by uh, LBNL as a means to co-simulate programs so you can actually bring multiple programs together rather than simulating one program, feeding the outputs into another, and then running that. So it, what it does is it, it allows you to decrease simulation time um, and it allows for a, a much easier integration between the two, which is better in industry and in um, in the educational experience. Yeah, they use a backwards ray tracing um, tool for the daylight harvesting, which is um, inherently what the, the little bit of the literature background is that Energy Plus uses a very simplified method of daylighting, daylight harvesting. And I've identified that and the fact that Radiance um, is a very um, accurate means. So it's the two ends of the spectrum. Um, a lot of people use the daylight harvesting method in Energy Plus. And, uh, some of my results will show 
that Energy Plus over predicts a lot of interior illumination um, as compared to radiance. Radiance is the more accurate means, and I'm comparing it against the uh, commonly used rate or, uh, Energy Plus method. So the case building is uh, Capital Gateway Plaza right here off of Myrtle Street. It's a three-story office building. Uh, it has standard pane uh, ridden windows, uh, three floors, 32,000 square feet, about an EY of about 63, which isn't terrible, uh, but actually comes back to um, the operation of the building um, is why it's so low, but um, I won't get into that. It has a built-up heat pump system with a, a boiler, uh, cooling tower, and a dedicated outdoor air system. And when we, when we modeled this for uh, the project, blinds weren't modeled at all, which is the typical, um, typical operation scheme. There's the building, you might, you might recognize that. Uh, here's the energy model. Here's the floor layout. So the actual true north axis is actually off, off axis um, for, for reasons of just simplicity and being able to give um, directional uh, relation. We rotated the building um, about 32.4 degrees, uh, 32.4 degrees this way, uh, which gave a change of about, I think it was about 0.6% um, annual energy consumption. So enough, not enough to make a difference. So um, what it would allow us to do is just to say, on the north facade at this time, it's this amount of collusion, uh, rather than saying northwest at 32.4 degrees, just generalization purposes. Here's the floor by floor layout. Um, the yellow zones are the daylight zones with the daylight sensor, and the red zones are the core zones. So one thing you can take away from this is the fact that this building is a core zone dominated building. So inherently, it's not, um, it shouldn't be used for daylight. Well, daylight should be the main, um, a main component. Um, and you'll have to see that um, I will have done three sensors per, per zone, uh, one nearest the window, one in the middle of the zone, one in the back, to kind of give a better idea of uh, daylight penetration. Again, the first model, um, you yeah, so in the, in the energy model, um, Energy Plus only allows you to use two sensors per zone. So I actually had two, two different models. One in the visible space. Well, no, so this is all relative. This is, in the actual space, there's no daylight harvesting. It's just manual blinds. So what I'm doing in the energy model is applying the sensors so I can see the light distribution and um, kind of show how the light affects the building. It's just, it's just the, for energy modeling purposes. So this is a, a diagram I took from um, Kevin's work. Uh, we have percent occlusion right here on the uh, y-axis, and then you have, it's kind of an odd, odd graph, but you have increase in penetration depth um, for occlusion. So once 120 watt per square meter um, exterior radiance normal to the sun is met on the facade and the floor, per facade per floor. Um, so once 120 is met with increase in penetration depth, you have increasing percent occlusion. Uh, consequently, uh, to uh, retract the blinds, you have to drop below the 120, below 120 for a certain duration. So um, once 120 drops, um, the occlusion or um, blinds retract, you know, 10% at a time over uh, over a three-hour time span. So after three hours, it will completely, uh, completely retract. And uh, an important thing to take away from this is that his model assumes that 20% of the blinds are always retracted. 5% of the blinds are always engaged and rotated closed, so rotated down just like this blind. And 15% of the blinds are always engaged and rotated open, so down but rotated open, zero degrees with the horizontal. So at, a, at any time, um, the minimum is 20%. So the river windows were broken up um, for the modeling purposes. They're broken up and randomized into 10 windows per facade per floor. Each window corresponds to 5 to 15% of blind inclusion. Uh, the blind, uh, court, the fraction of the windows corresponds to the total length of the window. So um, if it's a 100-foot span, I can't remember what the exact length of this is, so 100 foot span, you want 15% of that um, right here, so it would be a 15 foot window, basically. And so what I did is I operated each window as its own component when doing the actual modeling. 
Uh, so important thing to take out is that uh, window three, like right here, will only engage, if we remember that graph, it'll only engage if 120 watt per square meter exterior normal to the surface is hit. And then after a penetration depth of 0.5 meters, and then we'll retract after three hours of um, three hours below the 120. So as you can see, as you go down, you have an increase in penetration depth. So basically, it's just I'm taking a fraction. I'm breaking that graph up into uh, sections, which I'll actually just show you right now. So penetration depth is a function of solar altitude and solar azimuth. So depending on where the, where the sun's at at any point. And an important thing is window height along with sill height. So here's the equation I use, just simply it's uh, window height plus sill height divided by the tangent of the um, incident angle. So you're, you're not trying to model the light shell, light shell aspect of the blinds being horizontal surface or like the ceiling? Well, the blinds themselves are modeled, um, but what it comes down to is that uh, there, there's no light shelf. Um, there is an interaction between the light incident angle and the slat width. So obviously, depending on where the sun's hitting, it'll have some, somewhat of a shadow. And depending on the blind orientation, where it's at, it will, um, it will throw light a certain distance. But in Energy Plus, it's either the windows up or down. So what I did is I modeled them horizontally. So I'm saying that, um, go back to this real quick, that if, if something's met, this group of window may, um, so this one's always engaged, rotated, open. Are closed. This one's always engaged, rotated, closed. So these are fixed. <laughs> these, the um, windows three through eight, um, will engage if these certain triggers are met. So it's just depending upon the um, the coding that I put into the program. So each window will will um, will they actually depend upon each other. I'll show you that later on. But um, as far as this is, they're independent. So this window will open if it uh, two uh, two meters of penetration depth is met with the 120. So each, each window is different, um, but they correspond to the same, uh, the same relation as far as this graph is concerned. So I'll just kind of show you the breakout. So this is how I did it. Uh, we have the, the 20 to 30 percent is broken out here. So you can see, uh, I'll just kind of go to the 40 to 50. So 40 will only engage if after one meter penetration depth is met. And then uh, currently it will only retract after one and a half hours. So what it does is um, each window is separate, but they're based upon each other. So this one will only retract or only engage if this one's engaged, and then so on and so forth. It's kind of annoying to explain. I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, so 120 watt per meter on the window or penetration depth falls below the, the trigger. So the control algorithm assumes that all blinds per facade and end floor, 20% attractive, 50% engaged, and 5% are engaged and rotated closed. So the, here's just the, the percent occlusion equation. Um, so what, out of this, we get a minimum um, percent occlusion per facade and floor is 10% always engaged. And the maximum you can ever see is 70%. So this y-axis isn't the actual percent occlusion, it's just relative percent occlusion. So we'll get into the results of um, blind switch A. Here you can see uh, this is a April 22nd east facade first floor. Uh, we see in the red we have percent occlusion, the dark red line. And blue we have penetration depth and uh, green is direct solar. And here's the set point, the 120 watt per square meter set point. So we can see as the percent occlusion increases because the direct solar it's above the 120 watt per square meter. So we have full occlusion, the 70%. And what's interesting about this particular, um, this particular time is that the, uh, the direct solar drops below the 120 for about, uh, about an hour here. And therefore, you have this uh, retraction of the blinds. And then it goes right back up because it jumps above the 120. So the important thing to take away from this is the fact that it works both directions. It can increase or it can increase occlusion, decrease occlusion, and constantly go right back up. Depending upon if a cloud runs by, uh, blocks it for an hour, it's not going to completely open everything because it's below 120. So there is that interaction with the the, um, the dual interaction of opening and closing. 
And here, December 5th, East was operated for. Here's a typical um, operation. This is pretty standard for the majority of the year. You have full occlusion in the morning, and then you have 10% uh, that open every hour. And the, the point thing, the important thing to take away from this is that only 10% of the blinds can open or retract per hour, just just depending on the um, particular algorithm. So here's kind of a flow chart of the algorithm. You really can't read this, but um, it's a stack control decision scheme. So this control decision scheme was based off of just um, just as I went, I, I threw in the first couple. You know, it has to be above 120. It has to be um, a penetration depth of 0.5 meters. And then you get all these individual um, responses depending upon uh, the time of year and where you're at in the, in the U.S. or in the world. So really, this algorithm is based on um, the Boise weather file. So it, it would change per um, per city, but not by, but not by very much. So the model error that we're seeing, uh, there's a particular error that ha occurs on April 26th. You can see that you have the 70% occlusion, and then it starts to open up lines. And then right here, you see uh, it drops below the 120 watt per square meter, and then jumps right back above. But because of the, um, the flow chart that I have in there, what goes on is that you have so solar radiation and, the, and penetration depth rise above the respective point. At point B, both fall below for, uh, for two hour duration, and the direct solar immediately rises above the 120. Uh, the air is caused because of the code, um, but what we found out is when we ran it for the entire year, uh, the most that ever occurs is 0.08% of the year in Boise. I ran it for, uh, for five other weather files, and I found out the most that occurs is in Golden, Colorado at 0.2% of the time. So it's an acceptable error, and it just got to a point where um, you fix one error, you get might get five more. So it's just one of those things where we, we just took it as it was and um, it was deemed acceptable. So here's some um, example code. What I use in the energy management system of Energy Plus is basically a very uh, a specific way of controlling um, different different aspects. Uh, and what this comes down to is you can put a program in. And what it does is it'll run through every line of these codes. It'll set all these values, and then it'll use these if-then statements. So again, this is a stack control decision scheme. So if these aren't met, it'll run down to the next one, and so on and so forth. And um, it's really complicated stuff. But uh, this is what I've developed from those um, kind of uh, kind of go as you go. Um, you run into one issue, you may run into another. So this is basically what came out of it for one of the windows, and each window is different. But the energy management system in, is called the EMS program in Energy Plus is a complex way of um, creating your own, um, your own algorithms. So that's, that's the, uh, what I want you to take from that. So that was the first uh, blind switch. Blind switch, switch B engages with vertical exterior illumination. So illumination per facade and floor rises above a certain trigger. So it's based on hourly vertical exterior illumination values gathered using radiance results. So uh, this, this model, we ran these analysis points, uh, I believe it was uh, two and a half feet above the floor, one foot outside each window um, per facade per floor. So we had three, I'm sorry, the middle of the facade per floor. So we had three per a facade. So we had five facades, so 15 sensors. And we got these luminance values for the entire year, and then I fed it into Energy Plus. So this one's not, this was not perfect. So we used um, radiance values to create this algorithm. But what's going on, again, is you have the percent occlusion on the line, same 5% um, always engaged rotated closed, and the same with the rotated open, and always attracted. So the fixed numbers all stay the same. But what's going on here is we have increased occlusion at the vertical exterior illumination uh, rises above these values, which is in um, K lux. So, just to kind of give you an idea. If you um, the 30 to 40 percent blinds will inc will trigger if you meet about I think 17,500 lux. And uh, the cool thing about this this algorithm is there's a hysteresis effect. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. This is occlusion. This is retraction. So, you go up to 70 percent. Um, always retracted or all, you know fully fully engaged windows. And there's this hysteresis effect. Um, so once they're triggered at this point, 
they will only retract if it drops down to a certain. So this hysteresis, I'll kind of show you. So this is what we have. So I broke it out again into 10 windows per facade per floor. Um, so like the, uh, we'll go the 50 to 60 percent will only engage if it hits 72,500 lux and will only retract if it drops below about 36,000 lux. So again, I have these segments broken out. And this is just the, the best way that we could introduce to um, create this algorithm because uh, Kevin just proposed them, but really my thesis was to create them and um, to get them working. So again, we go to validation. This is a much simpler uh, flow chart. We just have ex is exterior illumination above the set point. If yes, engage the blind and just it just rotates. It just completes this same cycle for every time step. If not, is vertical exterior illumination lower than or less than the lower set point and is the previous shade position engaged? So this is where um, it takes into account the previous shade position of the window before it. So the 20 to 30 percent, um, if that engages, um, the 30 to 40 percent will only engage if the 20 to 30 percent is engaged. So that's just where these points come in. And then again, validation, we have the same day, April 22nd, East Facade, first floor. So one thing you'll notice is that this algorithm has a much lower percent occlusion response than the other one does, but I'll get into that later. Um, so we have vertical exterior illumination on the East Facade in the blue, and then percent occlusion on the red. So um, if we go back to the table, right here is where you have, uh, I believe it's about yeah, 10,000 lux, and this is where um, the occlusion begins and then it drops again below below the minimum value which allows the um, the blinds to retract and then they shoot right back up after the vertical extreme illumination rises above. So this is a typical response for blind uh, blind switch 2012. And here's the individual values for uh, the luminous or uh, exterior luminous values for each window group. EGI 20 is uh, defined as an inadequate luminous distribution caused by large ratio of task to source light. Uh, geometry and occupant position, um, i.e. view angle, play a significant role in calculating EGI. It's referred to as calculation of daylight discomfort glare. Uh, we use the trigger, trigger value of 20 BGI, a 20 degree view angle towards the window, kind of like what I talked about earlier, and a very simple uh, flow chart. Is it above 120 at a work plane at a 20 degree view angle? If yes, engage the blind. If not, retract the blind. So very simple. Uh, the Hopkinson formula is what was used to uh, to develop this. And the nice thing about this is there's a DGI algorithm already built into Energy Plus is what we ended up using, which is what we copy, how we copied Corey De Silva's um, work. We just want to run DGI in our uh, in our uh, case study to kind of compare it and see what would happen. So to kind of give you an idea of view angle, it's kind of kind of mis misleading, but here we have a, um, a, north, a north window. So north direction, that's the window. Uh, the view angle is actually you know, 20 degrees here, so it's actually 290 off of the north axis. And then we get into northeast, you're actually 335 because you're 20 degrees. You see the rotation here. And then uh, East again, you're at uh, an 18 or yeah, 20 degrees off the north axis. So, really, what I want you guys to take away from this is that if you have a west-facing window, your view angle is really more southern. So, w when I when I kind of show you the results, um, you may see that uh, that a north a north facade has a lot more occlusion because it's actually a western-facing uh, view angle. So. Again, this is a, an important aspect to kind of remember later. The EMS system was what I used. Uh, it's a customizable computer program uh, for high-level control. It's not for simple, uh, simple uh, control decisions. And so it took a lot of time and effort to uh, create it because you basically have to become a computer programmer. Uh, it's a simplified language, stack decision scheme like we talked about earlier, uh, conditional programming, and an important aspect is that it uses trend variables, so you're allowed to collect data over time. So if you want to collect uh, uh, the window position for the last three hours, you can set a variable um, for the window position. And that's uh, a, huge, a huge thing in my um, 
programming. So the, the results that I'm going to show um, cover several different things. One of them is blind rate of change, which is defined as the percentage of blinds that move at least once per day per facade. And here's just an equation um, to kind of give you that. And so um, annual uh, rate of change values for the north, the east, and the south facade, we have red is blind switch A, blue is blind switch B, and DGI 20 is green. So one thing right off the bat you may notice is that DGI has the highest rate of change, uh, blind rate of change, which is because it's either below 120 or above 120. It's just a simple trigger. So it ends up being, uh, DGI is the, um, is the, I guess the um, highest rate of change, followed closely by um, blind switch A on the east facade, and then you can see that uh, blind switch B is uh, the lower of the three in all situations. And actually on the north facade, blind switch B never closes the window, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, number of blind movements is defined as the ratio of number of blinds. So once you know that they move, uh, what's the ratio of blinds that actually move per day um, compared to the total number of blinds per facade? So again, we have, you add up the number of blinds that moved, um, you add the number of times they moved. So whether open once and close once, um, so that'd be two blind movements per window. Um, here again, we have north, east, and south facade. Uh, again, DGI has the highest uh, number of blind movements compared to the three, the three models. And um, what you'll see here on blind switch A and B, Typically on the east and the south side, you see this kind of constant uh, value of two. Uh, what that corresponds to is blinds closing in the morning and retracting in the afternoon. So typically, what you'll see from these algorithms is that you get two blind movements per day, which is very typical. And this again is the over the entire year. So in the in January, you have a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a variety, but in the summer, it's typically just close in the morning. Um, and then open in the afternoon. Line demand was the next one that we used to compare each algorithm to. And here's just a basic function, which is just your set point inside minus your, uh, your uh, design or your actual value divided by your set point. So building demand on June 26 for all five models, we can see that always engaged has the highest demand because you have no daylight coming in, so you're using the most amount of electric lighting. And then it's followed closely by DGI in the, in the green. And then you can kind of see the blind switch A, B, and always retracted actually have very similar lighting demand values. So uh, it's, it, it comes up a little bit later. But just, just remember that uh, A, B, and always retracted are very similar with response to uh, demand of lighting. Then we get into annual and hourly average percent occlusion. So this is a uh, percent occlusion for the entire year. Um, so blind, this is blind switch A. As you can see on the north facade, you have a constant about 11%. And then the east, south, and west facade, they're pretty similar, uh, but about values of about 18 to 19%. And on the right here, we have some color maps. Um, it's, it's a 24, uh, 24 hours per day, um, 12 months of the year. Uh, so an interesting thing to take away is that you have blinds closing in the morning and retracting in the afternoon. And then you have the east facade, which oh, um, engages in the morning and then kind of retracts about noon. And then you have kind of the flip side, the west side, uh, engaging in the afternoon and then closing later. And then we have this for 2012B. Um, you can kind of see that A overall has a much, uh, much more imminent response. It, it, it reaches much higher values. Um, you can see the north facade is actually no response. And uh, they have very similar on the east and west. And then the south, uh, south is down here, uh, which again is a very, very similar response. Then we'll move into DGI. And right off the bat, you can see DGI is a much more volatile response as far as um, percent occlusion. And that's just due to the fact that um, depending on where you're at, so you can see the north facade, which from blind switch A and B is typically a very low response. Because it's a west-facing sensor, you're going to get much more response. 
So initially, we kind of saw this and we were like, uh-oh, something's going wrong. Um, but what it comes down to is view angle um, with respect to the window, um, depending on the orientation of the sensor. Annual energy consumption was measured in KBTU per year per square foot uh, EY. And I really can't see with that bar there. But uh, so we have a baseline building, which is blinds retracted and no daylight sensors. So you have, uh, we have other equipment, which is like uh, fans, um, electric um, interior loads, that sort of thing. Just kind of group them into one, one load so they're consistent. And then you have uh, heating in the red, uh, cooling the blue, and then green is lighting. And then this box percentage, or this box uh, component is the re reduction from the baseline. So as you can see, all this retracted has, um, has a lot less electric lighting because you have the supplemental um, light coming in, so you don't have to use as much electric lighting, obviously. So here's the savings. This is all in, um, again, KBTU per square foot per year. And I'm trying to remember, there's a lot of information. Um, but the big thing to take away from this uh, is an additional thing that we added. Um, so these, in, throughout the entire simulation, we just simulated interior blinds. So we decided to throw in exterior blinds to kind of see uh, what would happen, see if it was um, significant, because we've always kind of been under the assumption that exterior blinds can stop the, uh, stop the light, stop the solar load before they hit the window. So you're not cooling um, the load that's brought on by um, bringing the, the heat into the space. So from these simulations, we can see that if you compare always engaged to one another, you have a very significant difference to the exterior blinds, which is consistent with what our assumptions were. Um, then we move into kind of a calibration standards. So when you're creating your building, um, you always want to know how accurately does it does it model consumption. I'm sorry, that was this is annual annual energy consumption, yeah, uh, normalized per square foot uh, of the building. So then, yeah, again, how accurately does our model predict? Um, there's two methods that are used to determine if your, if your um, model is, uh, is deemed calibrated. Uh, normalized mean biased error and the coefficient variation of the root mean square error. Um, in in uh, ASHRAE actually recommends that you use uh, one or the other. Um, here at the lab, we always try to go for both. Um, so the maximum allowable coefficient of variance of root mean square error is 15%. And uh, for normalized uh, mean biased error, it's only 5%. So we can see that the baseline is deemed calibrated because it's under each one. Um, and as you introduce these blind algorithms, you can see that it, um, it kind of throws everything out of whack. And the thing to take away is that um, if you introduce a manual blind control scheme, you may be accurately modeling the response of the, the building, but your overall energy model is going to be thrown out of whack because um, you made an assumption that you had to have this amount of electric lighting, whereas you may have needed less or more, or whatever the situation is. So um, just wanted to show the fact that each model will throw the existing model out of calibration, which means you're going to have to go back through and change something else, whether it's the chiller consumption or the boiler or some other component. But the important thing to take away is that it will affect your overall model. Moving to my second goal, which is to compare the results of energy plus the simplified method with the, um, the radiance method. So the energy plus detail method, just to go into a little bit of background, um, it takes exterior horizontal illumination from the sun and the sky, and the interior luminance is split into three different categories. So there's sky related, which is diffuse, there's sun related, which is the direct component of the, of the sun, and we move into also the interior reflections. So once the light comes into the space, how does it, how does it respond to uh, the wall type or the surface type? So those are the three components that Energy Plus uses to calculate interior illumination. The radius method, um, kind of like you talked about, it's a stochastic method of backwards ray tracing, which is designed to trace the light source from a point of interest. Um, the benefit of doing that is you're not tracing it from the point of the, of the sky, so you're not going to get all that useless 
daylight, you're not going to get the stuff hitting the, the ceiling or the ground or anything like that. You're looking at it from a certain point and saying, how much light is affecting my sensor? Um, geometry is obtained in SketchUp, so you put the geometry in, uh, you run an annual model, and uh, the important thing is that for each use is a continuously changing sky condition. Can you consider using like photogrammetry to build your 3D models? Uh, no, well, the thing was, I was familiar with Energy Plus, I knew how to use that, and um, I really wanted to get into to radiance and just know more about that because here at the lab we use a lot of radiance. Um, I didn't get into the ins and outs of it more. It was more just um, how do I get somebody the information they need to, to run it. I actually worked with Alan here at the lab. He ran all the radiance runs and um, got that going. But, so we kind of worked hand in hand. And, uh, but no, we, we didn't actually, we didn't actually uh, consider using that. We got to a point where it was like we just need to finish this, you know, and, um, which is pretty standard, I think, for a thesis. But then we'll move into the, the results of uh, the comparison of Energy Plus and Radiance. Uh, we use daylight metrics. We use UDI, useful daylight lumens, uh, which are just hourly time values based on three lumens ranges. Uh, so 0 to 100 is not useful. Uh, 100 to 2,000 is useful. And then above that is considered not useful. So here, 2012A, gosh, I'll have to remember this. Um, so Energy Plus method in green and the Radiance method in orange. Um, so if you go compare, you have the south facade, east facade, you have sensor closest to the window, middle of the room, and the back of the room. Um, if you compare the two, um, you look at, uh, we'll just look at the useful daylight luminance. 78% of the sensor closest to the window on the south facade, so 78% of the time is considered useful. And you look at the radiance values, which are inherently more accurate, and we know that those are uh, the truthful answers. They may be a little off, but... They're much more accurate, um, 78 to 48 percent. As you go down the list, you can just see that Energy Plus overpredicts interior illumination on um, a, a facade by facade basis. There's uh, there's no uh, there's no withholding. I mean, they're all they're all the same. Um, and then you get into uh, the greater values above 2,000. You can see that um, Energy Plus again overpredicts the uh, the wider ranges as well. And then the always attractive model, which is just, I just wanted to show you that, um, you, again, you go 58% to 37% as you go down. Again, you have these massive differences. I mean, down here, the furthest from the window, on the east facade, now Energy Plus is saying that you have 76% of the time is considered useful daylight, whereas in, in uh, real life, it's actually more like 18%. So there's a very significant difference between the two with respect to UDI. We then move into daylight autonomy, which is just the annual um, percentage of annual daytime hours that a certain point is above a certain luminance value. And we just ended up using 300 lux, which is about 30 foot candles, which is your standard office setting. Uh, here's results for 2012A and retracted again. You can see that Energy Plus, again, over predicts um, the interior illumination values. Uh, again, very significantly. Daylight factors, which were a ratio of interior to exterior luminance, were compared on uh, October, October 23rd for the east, south, and the west facade. This graph is kind of confusing, so I'll just kind of run over it real quickly. But um, what we're seeing is that the daylight factors for, uh, for the radiance method um, are much higher than the actual values for Energy Plus. So Energy Plus is either um, it's either over-predicting interior or under-predicting exterior. So either way, um, Energy Plus is not accurate by any means. It's a very simplified method. And the, real, the reason they did that is they wanted to create a much, um, a much quicker response. When we ran these radiance, radi uh, radiance simulations uh, for just one, I think for blind switch A on uh, one condition, it took us, I think, like 84 hours to run an annual simulation. So you run that in Energy Plus, it's like, you know, 15 minutes. So there's um, an aspect of, uh, of realism, like in, in the actual, you know, in, um, in the real world, are we going to use a 90-hour simulation if we need a quick response? Probably not. And so the goal of this project was to compare the two and see, is it close enough that it doesn't matter, or 
is it at a point where you should use radius over energy plus? We go back to the interior illumination. Here's just the sensor layout for a typical zone. One right by the window, one right by the window, one in the middle, one away. Um, here just kind of shows the aluminous distribution for energy plus, which is in the, uh, the dotted lines and then uh, the solid lines are radius. Radius just shows that um, here's radius down here and uh, we have uh, energy plus up here. So again, just over prediction of interior aluminous. Uh, we we didn't. And in this particular situation, there's a building right next to it. There's some foliage, um, but that just got to a point where it was just too complicated. Um, but really, I mean, obviously, if another building right by it's going to affect uh, the daylight allowance um, because in this situation, on the east facade, you have a building right next to it, so you're not going to get that. Um, the penetration depth that we're seeing. So um, realistically, you're going to have a lower uh, retraction rate and that sort of thing, but um, it is important to take into account if you have the time. And this just shows luminances for blind switch A on the east facade. Uh, again, you're just seeing that energy plus over predicts and radius uh, is more accurate. So we're going all the way up to 1250 uh, Lux. So I mean, it's a vast overprediction that we're seeing. Lighting demand was compared. So on the flip side, you have less lighting demand for energy plus, which is um, an exaggerated energy savings potential because you actually need more uh, more light to compensate. Annual consumption was compared. I uh, just quickly go over this. This is um, a vertical bars rather than the horizontal. But um, here's the differences in uh, consumption. So we have Energy Plus on the left and Radiance on the right for each run. So overall, you can see that Energy Plus um, will over-predict energy savings due to your um, conservation measures. So it's important to note that Energy Plus is, is not perfect. Bless you. Uh, we compared the two uh, to try and see if um, when you're modeling, do you need more than one sensor? And what we found out is that uh, we compared each blind algorithm. Um, there's at most, a 1.44% annual energy consumption difference between using one or two sensors. So really, you don't need multiple sensors in the zone. Um, you can just stick with one. And we get to cooling loads, which aren't that important. But um, cooling loads are kind of somewhat affected. Uh, and then you get heating. You get the always retracted against the baseline model has you know 0.7%. So it's not as big of a deal. The third goal, I'll just run over this quickly because I think we're running out of time, um, is developing framework for uh, VCB TV, which is a single platform used to support uh, multiple programs by coordinating real-time data exchange. Uh, an important thing is that it can, you can use this with backnet controllers, so you can actually tie it into a building automation system, and you can actually control it. Uh, it works on all platforms, um, and it can connect programs such as MATLAB, Simulink, Gradients, uh, Dimola, and here's the basic kind of, let's see with this. So we have our first energy plus simulation, which is to get um, the, uh, the uh, blind response. And then you feed those blind uh, control values into radiance to get a, uh, your, you know, your daylight output. You then convert those to a fractional base schedule and feed that back into energy plus. So this is the manual interactions. This is what typically goes on. Um, so. Uh, what we aimed at doing was setting up this platform where you just click this play button up here and Energy Plus will feed in um, will feed in your occlusion values and then spit out aluminous values. So it's this kind of interactive effect that you just click one button and you can kind of get everything out of it, which is very appealing um, from all aspects. Uh, the only problem is that, that we ran into is data conversion becomes very, uh, very discreet and very um, complex. And we'll move into just my future work. Uh, integrate real blind usage. So actually track, um, track an actual building for a year and see how these manual blind control algorithms compare. Because really we're not comparing accuracy, we're just comparing relative difference. So if you're able to compare um, accuracy, you can show that uh, whether or not the actual blind control algorithms are important to take into account. And what we kind of saw throughout both these things, or all these comparisons is that manual blind controls should be taken into account. Um, 
on any level, whether it was the, um, the very minimal um, response seen from blind switch B or the maximum from DGI, whether, whether or not you take uh, one or the other, um, they should because they affect consumption, they affect demand, they affect all aspects of the building. Uh, another important thing to take into account would be visual and thermal comfort parameters, which I didn't take into account. And to develop a fully integrated tool um, that coordinates you know, real-time data exchange between radius and energy plus. Right now, I'm just feeding it in a schedule. It's taking that schedule and converting it to a, um, a lighting output, and then it reads those external values and uh, reruns it. So um, it's just the first step uh, to integrating the two. And, um, hopefully in the future you have a full integrating tool that can be used um, in all, all forms and aspects of um, in all demographics as well. There's my references, there's a lot more. But I know that was a lot, really quickly. Um, no one probably understood that, but um, <laughs> does anyone have any questions? There's a, there's a 